Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Before I actually get into the nitty gritty for today, I just want to say for all of you who support us on Patreon, thank you so much for your support. Um, just to let you know, the monthly post for January is coming. Um, I would have done it, actually done it last weekend. I don't even know how to do it like near the start of the month if possible for the previous month but we've been so insanely busy preparing for something quite big that I actually can't discuss yet uh, that I just haven't had a chance but it is coming this weekend so thanks so much guys for your patience it is it is on its way anywho we're going to kick things off today with a little something from Nvidia and I say something but really I should have said some things because we actually have two quite interesting bits from Nvidia today and the first of which is thanks to videocards.com. Now they actually made a tweet basically stating that according to their sources we are going to be seeing a 16 Gbps variant of the RTX 2080 Ti. Now this is going to be the same amount, that being 11 gigabytes, so we are just going to be seeing an increase in that Gbps. We have seen them, seen them excuse me, do this before with the Pascal series like for example the GTX 1080 so this is not outside the realm of possibility and very much would be something that Nvidia would actually do. But the second thing we have which I think is more interesting is that we could see a new architecture at GTC. So basically we are having the annual GPU technology conference next week and according to a report on tweaktown.com we could very much be seeing Ampere being teased at this very event from Nvidia. Because, well, it just makes logical sense, as Tweaktail themselves point out, because obviously they're not going to be talking about Volta really, Volta is kind of old news, Turing is obviously pretty well known at this point we obviously have had new variants come out so they may talk a little bit more about the latest additions to that lineup perhaps talk a little bit more about the improvements to ray tracing and dlss and all that sort of thing but they're also going to have something big to share or big to tease at least so it would make sense that it's going to be ampere which is what we are expecting to see be the next GPU architecture from NVIDIA and is expected to be on the 7nm node. Now this is not by any means to say that we're going to see a new graphics card teased or released but instead the GPU architecture because again Turing pretty much just came out. It's not been out all that long so obviously if they announced a new um, graphics card this soon even if it wasn't due to come out for like another year or something I don't think that would go down particularly well. Um, so I do think it is just going to be the architecture behind it, perhaps we'll get the confirmation of the fact that it's on 7nm. Either way, I think it could be really interesting because we can kind of get a little sort of hint at what's going on behind the curtain with Ampere. Now of course this is all pure speculation, for all I know Jensen Huang is going to come on stage and just do a little tap dance for half an hour, but you know, I'm going to go with a more realistic approach here. So we're going to move over from NVIDIA to their arch nemesis AMD. As we actually have yet another entry into the rather crowded Polaris 10 market, as AMD have launched a China-only Radeon RX 560 XT. So again, this is only going to be sold in China, and at the moment there's not even a rumbling that we'll ever see it come to America or of course Europe. Now at present Sapphire is being the sole vendor of the card. So what spec reductions do we actually see? Well, essentially what we are looking at is a cut down version of the RX 570. And we see the cuts in the normal places. We see 28 CUs and we also see a reduction in the clock speed. It's going to have a boost clock of 1073, so 1073 megahertz. And for shader and texture performance, it's going to have around 75% of the throughput of the RX 570. Now, interestingly, we do still see the full 256-bit memory bus from Polaris 10, but we are going to be seeing a slight reduction in memory bandwidth. So it's going to be GDDR5 running at 6.6 6 .6, GBPS, so just a small 
step down. And as for how much VRAM we're actually going to be seeing on offer, it is going to be either in 4 gigs or 8 gigs variants. Unsurprisingly, we are seeing no change in the TDP. It's still holding steady at 150 watts. Now, we might see a ever so slight reduction due to the fact that obviously we have had all those cuts that I just went through, but officially AMD are saying no, it's 150 watts because it's better to say, look, it's going to be the same. And you maybe see a reduction of a few watts here or there and get a nice sort of pleasant surprise rather than sort of promise it and obviously not be able to deliver, which I think makes perfect sense. So essentially the 560 XT is essentially aimed at filling the gap between the RX 560 and RX 570. But unfortunately we do not have any idea on the price. We did not even get a rough sort of ballpark figure even of how much this is going to cost because that is obviously pretty damn critical. But it's still, it is a rather interesting part. A bit of a shame that we'll not see it released outside of China, but it's not exactly surprising. AMD have done this before with the RX 580 to 2048SP, which really just rolls off the tongue. You can really tell, by the way, I just struggled to say it just now, that how smoothly that rolls off the tongue. But in all seriousness, um, they have done this before. But still, this is a interesting offering. But we also have a very interesting report on Navi. So what we have here is a report thanks to WCCFTech.com. Now, of course, I will link their article in the description below this video where you can give it a read if you so desire. But the TLDR, essentially, according to one of their sources, we are going to be seeing Navi quite soon. Now, roadmaps do change, obviously. We have seen them cancel things and bring things out of nowhere like we saw with the Radeon 7 and all this sort of other stuff so do take this all with a pinch of salt but essentially according to WCC's t uh, sources the Navi 7NM GPU is a whole one month behind the launch of the 7NM Ryzen. Now, of course, just as a bit of a reminder, we are expected to see the 3000 series desktop processors at Computex. So that would mean that we are not going to see Navi before early August. So that leaves two prime candidates for them to do a big flourish announcement, that being Gamescom and SIGGRAPH. Personally, I would put the sensible money on Gamescom because, well, it is obviously a gaming convention and 7NM Navi is obviously going to be aimed at gamers. Um, SIGGRAPH would still make sense. I wouldn't be surprised to see it there as well, but I would think the main reveal is going to be at Gamescom. But again, we don't know for sure. That is pure speculation. So... The TLDR of all of what I just said is that we're going to see Ryzen 3000, we are expected to see that at Computex, and then a month later we are going to be seeing 7NM Navi. So we are going to finish up today's proceedings, a little something from Intel, actually I should say some things again, that's twice I've done that now. But the first of which is actually regarding Comet Lake. So what we have here is yet more information that has been brought to us thanks to an update to Intel's Linux DRM kernel driver and core boot which previously went under the handle of a Linux BIOS. And thanks to these, we have some pretty cool information about upcoming Comet Lake processors. Now, the description in the update in the Linux DRM kernel driver says that Comet Lake is, quote, coming off of Coffee Lake. So that very much implies that, that we are seeing yet another refresh of Coffee Lake here. Now they also state the driver updates, I mean that we're going to be seeing Gen 9 being continued here. And we also see both GT1 and GT2 configurations and obviously GT is graphics technology. Now the more interesting thing is actually found in Core Boot. Now this can be found on the GitHub page, which of course will be linked in the description below this video. But according to the information there, we are going to be seeing Common Lake U, which obviously, as you might guess, is aimed at laptops, when these are going to have up to six cores, whereas Common Lake, Comet Lake H, excuse me, and Common Lake S will have up to 10 cores. Now just a bit of a refresher, we are expected to see, and I do say expecting because we don't obviously know for sure, to see Ryzen 3000 potentially have up to 16 cores on a single chip. And we are expected to see Comet Lake launch in the middle of the year. So we could see these announced at Computex this year. And if this holds true, and again that is a pretty sizable if, we're going to see Comet Lake come out 
and then if the rumours about Ryzen hold true, we're going to be seeing that come out in July, and obviously 16 versus 10, don't have to do much quick maths on that one. Uh, so we have one more Intel thing, I did say some things as I already said, and we have a bit of an update from Intel to its control panel, more targeted towards gamers. So we have a video which was shared by Intel Graphics and we have a much improved, more gamer friendly control panel for Intel Graphics being shown off here. It shows a game launcher, setting optimization tool which is clearly inspired by that of GeForce Experience and we also see global display settings, monitor setup and all this sort of jazz. So this is pretty clear what this is for. So obviously they have become aware that iGPUs can be used for lower end games like we see in the world of eSports. So obviously they're making this for the people who use their iGPUs for that. But primarily I would say this is going to be for their Gen 11 iGPU and of course the eventual desktop discrete GPU we're going to be seeing from Intel. They obviously want to get all their ducks in a row before they release it because as we have seen, this sort of stuff really does matter, and driver support really matters. So having it all in this sort of nice package is definitely important because we have seen just how important that actually is for AMD. Like They have really, really improved the whole um, driver situation, and obviously their control panel situation as well was much, much better now with Radeon Adrelian, Adrenaline. That's the word I went to say, sorry about that guys, bit tongue tied today apparently. It's much, much better with Adrenaline than we saw previously, so Intel are obviously paying attention to the mistakes of their competitors and obviously taking the knowledge of Raja Kadori on board as well to make sure they have all this stuff sorted out beforehand. Pretty smart, obviously, and uh, nice to see, if nothing else. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support really does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul. Thanks again for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe. It does help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time.